Hello guys, Crispy here, welcome back to another video. In this one, my friends, I'm gonna be testing the GeForce RTX 3060 12GB model in Hogwarts Legacy. This one is the AFOX model of the card, beautiful white cooler, I really like this one actually. As usual, we are running it with the latest NVIDIA drivers and I am not manually overclocking it. You can see all of its specs right here in Tech Power Ups GPU-Z, resizable VAR is enabled, and over on the left, we're pairing it with a Ryzen 7 5800X 3D and 32GB of RAM of 3600 100 megahertz CL14 dual channel stuff. So let's get into it, shall we? Let's go over the settings. I'm playing at 1080p. By the way, I got asked why windowed full screen. This game has no full screen. We're using DLAA, which is by far the best AA method in this game, by the way. No upscaling at the moment, but we're going to test out some FSR. And we are utilizing the medium settings preset, which is the recommended preset for this card. Let's go. Also, a lot of you told me that we can actually change the appearance of this crappy looking mask over here so uh, let's go back to being um, crispy potter shall we <laughs> now that we don't look like a dead by daylight character anymore let's do this <laughs> all right let's start counting the fps right here this is the most intensive area in hogwarts that i've come across it usually stutters a heck of a lot here uh, and it drops fps like crazy look at that oh my goodness those one percent lows yeah they're pretty terrible but you know it's always above 60 frames per second at native 1080p here with 3060 so that's great on medium settings and the game still looks really really good here uh, on medium as well now this area right here is a bit more cpu intensive and that's why we're getting 100 plus fps inside compared to outside it's a little bit better because we don't really have a cpu bottleneck here um, with the ryzen 7 5800x 3d at least with the 3060 12 gigabyte byte and most of the time like gpu usage is pretty low there but i've seen that this cpu can do up to like 120 frames per second so if you're seeing much lower fps than what you're seeing here in this video with your 3060 it's probably because you are cpu bound if you pair it with like a ryzen 5 5600 for example or an i5 12 400f you will get lower fps in these cpu intensive scenarios hello jack how's it going buddy let's bet this guy oh they never look very cute guys for some reason i believe they are real people you know this guy is just cats like the professor in the movies running water is usually a little bit intensive as well as you can see it's dropping our frames into the 80s again what the heck what the heck crispy potter what are you doing look at this oh my god no that is Wait, wait, I was gonna call it a bug, but we gotta remember this, this it's magic. If magic was a, a real thing in real life, you know, we would probably be able to swim um, like that. <laughs> But yeah, pretty interesting to see that the FPS drop a bit near this running water. If it's stale water, uh, like in a lake, for example, it doesn't drop too much. But whenever it's like this in a river, uh, it drops the FPS by a fair amount. But still, it is not a problem whatsoever, guys. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on. Akio, there we go, there we go. Very good. I am a very nice wizard, as you can see. Well, anyways, let's get out of Hogsmeade and head into the forest a little bit. I'm very curious to see what it can do at 1440p though, because at 1440 it looks way sharper than at 1080p. The game is really soft at native resolution, unfortunately, so if you increase the resolution it's gonna get better in that regard, obviously. Um, this is not really the forest area that I wanted to see, uh, but you know what? It doesn't really matter. It would drop into the 80s, same as we've seen in that Hogwarts little place of doom that uh, drops our FPS by a lot. <laughs> so let's go ahead and try it out with some DLSS on quality. Gonna bump up the sharpness a little bit here just to make it a bit more crispier, you know, just how I like it. And... Uh, yeah, he's looking pretty good, and we got a ton more FPS at the moment. Now, the thing is, back in Hogwarts, as I told you, and Hogsmeade as, as well, it is more CPU bound, so the FPS are going to stay the same with the 5800X 3D in those scenarios. They're only going to increase here in forest areas with a lot of vegetation, basically in GPU bound scenarios. And uh, yeah, it's not even dropping from 100 frames per second. So it's going to be a buttery smooth experience. Also, I noticed that locking the FPS with Rivetuner Statistics Server or MSI Afterburner, um, you actually 
get a slightly smoother experience without as much stuttering so i suggest you guys to do that i'm not sure if it works with like the nvidia control panel for example if you lock it there but i know that if you lock it inside of the game itself it doesn't work as well but yeah obviously with dlss at 1080p things will run absolutely flawlessly because they already did previously and i gotta say that it looks better than if you used taa at native resolution so now let's try out some 1440p on the 3060 dlaa is still enabled and we're using the same medium settings and that native resolution okay around 60 frames per second it's still very playable like this guys Although it does drop from 60 FPS from time to time. Again, it looks way sharper and way better in 1080p, especially on my 42-inch monitor, as you might expect. <laughs> and um, it's still pretty decent, you know, around 60 FPS on average for a single-player title is more than enough. Dude, what the heck is that kind of aiming? Oh, boy. All right. All right, we got this, though. We got this. Yep, there we go. Good stuff, good stuff. Let's collect this. It still stutters, of course. VRAM usage is well under control with a 12 gigabyte GPU, so you don't need to worry about going over it, especially on medium settings. Can I push you or something? Like, that would be very interesting. Interesting, but I don't seem to be able to push her. Uh, wait, uh, Expelliarmus. Oh, there we go. That's that's kind of a push, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's not a bad experience whatsoever, even at native 1440p, so the 3060 is still a pretty capable GPU for this resolution, for sure. Let's go to Hogsmeade a little bit, actually. Let's check it out there. Here we are. Just want to check it out near the waterfall for a second. Okay. Dropping into the 50s. Nothing that we haven't seen so far, right? Like, still pretty consistent, I would say. It doesn't even drop from, like, 50 frames per second. Maybe at night in a swamp area, for example. I've seen it drop a little bit more there. It could drop into the, the 40s. But, yeah, it's pretty stable and uh, a pretty good experience overall, if you don't mind uh, less than 60 FPS at times. And this is where DLSS will start making a lot of sense. At 1440p on a 3060, this should look... A little bit better than native res with the TAA stuff. And we're now getting 80s and 90s and even touching 100 frames per second at times. That is very impressive. I'm going to turn on my torch looking thing here. Wand, yes. Uh, because this is actually a little bit more intensive as well. As you can see, 101. If I turn it off, it... it yeah, it goes up to 107. So you get like 5% less FPS whenever you use the Lumo stuff here. Let's check it out near the water. I just remembered about the Lumo stuff. Oh, hello. What? Can I open this, please? Um, no? Incendio. Come on. Levioso. Lumos? No. Uh, Hakio. Wait. Maybe we can do this. No, it doesn't work. What the heck? Maybe he doesn't see us. Oh, what? It actually works if he doesn't see us. It, it, why is he screeching or something? What the heck? It, it sounded like a dog in pain for some reason. Oh, boy. Not dropping whatsoever here. Only into the 70s. So it's going to be a buttery smooth experience again. Um, even at 1440p with 1440p visuals. Go down here, there are a little bit more vegetation around us. There is a little bit more vegetation. Again, the English. The English is hard, all right? Don't judge. It's almost night time, so we might start seeing some shadows being cast by our wand if we do this. And it's a little bit more intensive, but uh, we should probably head on to Hogwarts and uh, see the FPS in that little area. At 1440p, I would definitely choose to play with the LSS, by the way. Also, you can see the FPS touching 120s around here, 130s. So we weren't CPU bound at 1080p, even though GPU usage was at like 92 or 93%, because the CPU can do better indeed. But let's check it out over here. And I'm also um, spending a little bit more time at each resolution with the settings that I feel are most appropriate. And around here, it is not dropping as far as it did previously in the forest area. We saw like you know, FPS dropping to 80 or something like that. Let me just turn on my wand thingy, the Lumos. Yeah, 82 there. Okay, 80 FPS now gets a little bit more intensive for sure. Uh, with a lot more stuttering here though. So, uh. 
Yeah, I don't like that. But again, if you lock the FPS using Rivet Tuner or maybe NVIDIA Control Panel, it could get a bit smoother. Um, so I suggest you to try that out. Let's stop it there for 1440p. Awesome experience still. Okay, now at 4K, you should definitely use some DLSS, but I'm just curious to see how it runs <laughs> without it first. Medium settings, of course. And holy crap, that is the most inconsistent frame time graph so far in this video. Look at that. That is literal crap. <laughs> uh, it's also dropping sometimes inside of these bushes, for example, into the 20s. So, not good. Again, you should definitely use some DLSS if you're playing at 4K. The difference between this card and the 3060 Ti is insane, actually. If you enable some DLSS on quality, it should become quite smooth. Yes, it does indeed. Look at the difference, guys. We went from 30s to close to 60 frames, and now the frame time graph, well... No, it's still kind of crap. <laughs> it still stutters way too much. Holy! But the FPS gain is there, my friends, and it is very, very noticeable. Okay, crazy stuff, actually. In other games, it stutters for the first time when you're passing by some things for it to load, for example. But in this one, it just keeps on stuttering. <laughs> it's terribly bad, actually. I'm gonna try balance DLSS here at 4K because I have played with my 3060 Ti a lot at 4K resolution using balanced DLSS in older titles and it looked quite good still. I enjoyed a ton of games on that card at this res using DLSS uh, and mm, it seems to only give us like six, maybe 10 more frames per second at times. It, which is not that impressive. I was expecting a bit more performance coming from Balanced DLSS. Yep, still dropping into the 50s, still stuttering a heck of a lot. The lower your FPS here in this area, um, the more it stutters, basically. Again, in forest areas, it would get around the same FPS as this area right here, uh, but it would be a bit smoother with those frame times stabilized. So it is possible to play like this, but I wouldn't. Back to 1080p using DLAA now and the high settings preset. And these are the settings that I tried in my Sunday video, the full review of the 3060, which is linked down below if you're interested. I tested 17 games. And basically high settings looks way better than medium. Like take a look at those shadows. Dynamic shadows are a huge thing in this game, and I noticed that on medium settings it didn't have those, so quite a bit of a shame, you know, like, but, but it's, it's to be expected. <laughs> Still looked good on medium, but uh, the shadows alone are definitely a good reason to play on high instead of medium, in my opinion. I would choose high over medium because of them. Um, we've seen it here in Hogwarts already, let's check it out in the forest. All right, uh, wait for those textures to load. It takes a while here, I've noticed, whenever you're fast traveling around. 69 FPS, like, what's up with the 69? Most of the time it's around 69 at these settings. Very good. I'm not complaining whatsoever. <laughs> Yeah, it's kind of weird, you know? Let's uh, turn on the light. Wait a second. 70 FPS without it turned on and 65. Once again, you lose about 5 FPS. It was 5% previously because we dropped from 100 to 95 or something like that or like 107 to 102. So around 5% uh, at medium settings, but more around like... 10% uh, at the high settings whenever you turn on that light, just because of uh, the difference in the shadows, of course. But again, guys, it's just, it's, it's actually really impressive to me how they manage these shadows. And they are very good quality at the same time. I really like it on the high settings, guys. All right, let's go kill these bastards over here. That is absolutely brutal. Holy. Let's go do this. Yeah, this is super easy. It shouldn't really drop too much during these fights with all of the effects and stuff. It seems to be pretty stable anyway. I am gonna go ahead and do this. No, wait, wait, what are you doing? What are you doing? Just fly. No, no, I'm repairing him. What the heck am I doing? Fly. Fly away. There we go. Now I'm gonna set you on fire and expel Yarmus. There we go. The shadows are insanely detailed on high settings. Play like this, guys. Or enable the LSS and play with that enabled. A little bit more sharpening as well. Um, and this 
is probably how I'd play this game if I had a 1080p monitor. Of course, again, if you want the highest FPS possible, medium settings will deliver that with really good visuals still, but I think it's worth using the high settings. And since it dropped at native resolution, uh, DLSS, well, makes all of the difference here. It's now well above 60 frames per second at all times, I think, and you can enjoy a smooth, well, smooth with some stutters like that experience with really gorgeous graphics. The difference between high and ultra is not really that big, by the way, so if you're wondering if you should play on ultra instead of high, I do not recommend it. I think high is the sweet spot for the 3060, um, and yeah, you can expect 60 plus at all times now the using these settings the and DLSS. We got the Centaurs right here. The 1030 dropped so much near these guys for some reason. I don't know why. It did not like them whatsoever. Well, those were the FPS in the forest. I'm checking them out here in Hogwarts again. Back into the 100s. Oh, yeah, it's less CPU intensive right now because there are no NPCs around the central hall area now. Um, let's go. Get out, please. Turn on the Lumos stuff and check it out right here. So it's dropping a little bit more than it did previously. 71 FPS. Again, the stuttering is terrible, but it's, it's always going to be terrible. Um, also, that VRAM usage is above 8 gigabytes at 1080p high settings. So it could possibly stutter slightly more on an 8 gigabyte card like the 3060 Ti, although that provided a lot more FPS. Um, yeah, it could be slightly more unstable, basically. Uh, but uh, honestly, since the game stutters already, even without reaching the VRAM limits, I just don't really care. <laughs> 2560 by 1440 DLAA is enabled, high settings, no DLSS. Just gonna check it out around here for a little bit, see how much it will drop in like worst case scenario. It's interesting that this is worst case scenario. It's kind of weird, right? <laughs> All right, inside of the bushes, yeah, 39 right there. Eh, again, if it wasn't for the stuttering, it would actually have been a really decent experience because single player title doesn't require 60 plus FPS all of the time, in my opinion. I especially <laughs> uh, played around with a 1050 Ti for about like three hours, passing some of the main missions of the game while dropping from 30 FPS at times and with a lot more stuttering than this. And I still had a bit of fun with that experience. Not too bad, but again, let's try it out with DLS and go to the forest quality bump up that sharpness by a little again and let's see oh 90s that is really good lady please why do you always gotta talk to me <laughs> i don't understand oh boy start counting the frames let's go back out there here oh boy I mean, it's it's so much better looking with those shadows, man. I just can't emphasize that enough. It's really gorgeous. What the hell is this? I see, like, a silhouette sometimes around here, like a ghost thing. But then it disappears when I get close to it. I don't get it. The game is also installed on an NVMe SSD, by the way. So no issues regarding storage speeds. It stutters because it stutters and it takes a while to load because it takes a while to load again 60 frames per second it drops sometimes and it still stutters a heck of a lot um vram is now at 8.7 8.8 gigabytes now look at that that is crazy <laughs> vram usage not dropping around here as you can see only into the lower 60s okay 58 right there it's definitely still a playable experience although i would probably stop doing that i just went lumos oh what the hell i can walk around like this i didn't know that i'm invisible and i'm using lumos at the same time so that means that they're just seeing a little star walking around basically <laughs> kind of weird right 69 fps once again i don't know what it is with that number and me but uh yeah it happens very very often in my life i guess it's getting around the same fps as it did at medium settings in native resolution right and in that case compared to that i would totally choose to play uh, at 1440p dlss quality and high compared to native on medium because 
it just looks that much better and the uh, upscaling implementation in this game is quite nice as I have been telling you guys <laughs> for a ton of times already. It's quite stable here even though we have a lot of uh, grass around us, a little bit of water right here, yeah, dropping slightly there um, and some more vegetation overall. Yeah, this is not bad. Lastly, we're back to 1080p DLAA using the ultra settings with no ray tracing. So first impressions, it seems to be quite playable. Look at this, in this area, it's actually getting 90 frames per second. That's pretty impressive, kind of better than high. What? No, <laughs> like this, this is not an intensive area whatsoever. So let's get to one, all right? Uh, also, yes, I changed clothes because this is the next day because I already tested ultra settings and uh, edited everything and ray but then I noticed that uh, the footage was choppier than the actual game itself so you can imagine it was unwatchable so I'm recording everything again as you can see around here it doesn't drop from 60 frames per second that's actually really impressive guys and let's get out here okay now it's starting to drop especially if I use the Lumos thing yeah 40s lower 40s and mid 40s at times that is yeah, it's, it's not very good, especially compared to what we got at the high settings and high with DLSS and stuff like that. Um, so I, I really wouldn't play at Ultra. I mean, we've already found the perfect settings for the 3060, uh, so there is no point in testing this a little bit further, you know, because it stutters too much on Ultra and it drops the FPS like crazy. But if you enable DLSS... Can we get 60 plus? It still has a ton of stuttering issues, as you can see, like 19 FPS, 1% lows. What the heck is that? <laughs> how, how did the developers give this game a pass like this on PC? I don't understand. Uh, but anyway, it didn't really drop there from 60 frames per second. Jesus Christ, this is very, very scary. Like, whenever you step onto this, it's so damn loud <laughs> compared to everything else. It's interesting. Oh my goodness. Eee, that frame time, guys. It's It still drops a little, as you can see from 60, and it didn't on high. So I think high is the way to go. And if it was nighttime right here, it would get even lower FPS. I'm actually going to demonstrate because I just remembered we, we can wait the day off, you know? Okay, here we are. Yeah, as you can see, it's already really close to 60. Hey, it's kind of the same, maybe. <laughs> Slightly better, I guess. No, okay, now it's dropping, but it's not really that huge of a difference. It is playable overall, but not the most enjoyable thing, in my opinion. Let's turn on ray tracing now, just for uh, curiosity's sake. Okay, I didn't turn on ray tracing with 3060 Ti, and a lot of people complained about that. Um, but yeah, RT in this game is completely broken. It even makes my 4080 struggle, and uh, well, as you can see, it drops it by quite a bit. Yep, 30s. It's possibly even going to drop from 30 FPS into the 20s at times. I think that happened yesterday. These reflections look like crap. Like, ray tracing is enabled, it's supposed to, to look really good, obviously. It's super, super intensive and it makes the game even more stuttery than what it was. Yet, these look like crap! Like, what the heck, dude? And, not to mention that if I go in this direction, uh, we can see a little bit of water down there. There are no ray traced reflections on the water. As soon as every object in the screen gets off the screen, like this, there is no reflection there. Like, how is this so intensive and yet it doesn't provide anything great to, to the experience, you know, it, especially to the graphics? I don't understand. Wait, that was with DLSS. <laughs> Okay, I thought it was performing slightly better than yesterday, yeah. All right, DLSS was enabled on quality after all. If we disable DLSS, yep. Okay, that's that's exactly what I was telling you about previously. It does drop from 30 frames per second at times. It is a terrible experience with ray tracing enabled. So that's been it, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Hope it was informative to you. And I will catch you in the next one very soon. Also, the water isn't even intensive with ray tracing because it, it does nothing to the water at all, <laughs> as you can see. It's, it's such a, a bad implementation of it in this game. I'm gonna get out of here. See you tomorrow. And as always... Oh my god, look at that drop into the cinematic frame rate. Damn. Love you all. Bye-bye.